it was actually just, um, it, it never gets easier because there's always something to figure out. Tom Cruise decided to come out. If Tom Cruise is gay and he decided to come out, like, that would be a real problem. Tom Cruise is getting exposed. That's right, one of Hollywood's biggest stars ever is being linked to the current poster boy for disgrace, Sean Diddy Combs. You know, if these stars had known that Diddy would one day become the face of scandal, they probably would have steered clear. Now they're catching strays just for being associated with him. According to rumors, and even Tom Cruise's ex-wife, Katie Holmes, it looks like Cruise may have been a guest at Diddy's infamous parties. With everything we know now, countless lawsuits, brave, Diddy's parties are definitely not the place for anyone with their wits about them. Showing up at one of these shin might mean you're complicit in whatever shady stuff is going down behind closed doors. Even Cat Williams has already put out warnings, telling people to stay far away from Diddy's parties because they're anything but your average Hollywood bash. Right, because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to party. And you gotta tell him no. Oh, you gosh. got to tell him no. I, I did. I did. So what is a guy of Tom Cruise's caliber doing at a Diddy party? Let's dive in. Obviously, Tom Cruise doesn't need an introduction. He's a Hollywood icon. He's got an honorary Palm d'Or, three Golden Globe Awards, and nominations for four Academy Awards. His movies have raked in over $4 billion in North America and over $11.5 billion worldwide, making him one of the highest grossing box office stars of all time. Plus, he's consistently one of the world's highest paid actors. But as shiny as his career sounds, Cruz's life has been riddled with controversies. It seems like every celebrity who's been linked to Diddy has some shady stuff in their background. Maybe that's why they're friends in the first place. Cruz has had his fair share of high-profile romances and public clashes, especially rooted in his religious beliefs. Let's start with Katie Holmes, the one seemingly dropping some of these bombshells. In the realm of Hollywood's most talked about romances, the whirlwind relationship between Katie Holmes and Tom Cruise is right up there. Their love story was full of grand gestures and and public declarations that captivated the world. He openly, and some have said over-enthusiastically, declared his love for new girlfriend Katie Holmes. But it all later unraveled amidst a flurry of headlines and speculation. The duo first stepped into the limelight in 2005, making their initial public appearance on April 29th at the David Di Donatello Awards in Rome. The world watched in awe as they quickly moved from casual dating to a serious relationship. Cruz's family was all for it, praising Holmes for her maturity and grounded nature. She was described as a very mature girl with a good head on her shoulders, and the pair seemed deeply in love. However, their fairy tale wasn't without its dark chapters. By June 2012, cracks began to show in their seemingly perfect facade. Holmes cited irreconcilable differences as the reason for their split, and as the media scrambled to figure out what went wrong, one factor kept popping up, Scientology. You know, there's actually this picture book about suppression, you know, and a social and antisocial personalities, and I was like, what is this, you know? I said, Scientology, I said, oh, I'm very interested. And uh, I, that's when I became a Scientologist. New. Tom Cruise's office has asked me to come to the Scientology Celebrity Center in Los Angeles to embark on a four-hour crash course in Scientology and what it's all about. Tom Cruise's connection with Scientology is no secret. The church, often surrounded by mystery and controversy, became a focal point in their relationship. Reports began to circulate about Cruise's obsession with the religion and his desire for their daughter, Suri, to join the church's Sea Organization. This branch is dedicated to immersing children in the church's beliefs with a discipline akin to a military institution. People are scratching their heads like, why would Cruise even want his daughter in a place like that? The church's doctrine, which dismisses conventional medicine in favor of treatments approved by the organization was rumored to be a major point of contention between Cruz and Holmes. The influence of Scientology on their relationship took center stage during their custody battle for Surrey. Media outlets buzzed with speculations that Cruz's deep ties to the church played a significant role in Holmes's decision to seek sole custody. The narrative painted a picture of a mother fearing for her child's future within the church's confines. So Tom Cruise um, actually finally confessed that Katie Holmes 
bailed on him, partly because she didn't want Surrey to be in Scientology. Holmes's concerns reportedly centered around the church's practices, particularly the idea of sending young Surrey to the Sea Organization, where she would be immersed in a rigorous regimen of church teachings. But things took a dark turn when rumors started flying around that Tom had 24-7 secret security on Katie, tracking her every move. He even had their phones tapped, so she had to get a burner phone just to call her dad. Then she found out that he was planning to send Surrey away to some brainwashing Scientology boarding school. Thankfully, with the help of her dad, who's also a lawyer, Katie managed to escape. We know that her father at the last stage last week came in, fired the security guards, fired the uh, public assistant, had the papers filed, and hired the attorneys. So it would be uh, easy to speculate that he was involved and the family was involved. These rumors were just speculations, leaving fans to wonder how much the church influenced one of Hollywood's most celebrated couples. But fans wouldn't have to ponder for too long because Leah Remini came out and spilled even more tea. In the world of Scientology, few have been as vocal about their experiences as Leah Remini. The actress, once a devoted member of the church, went from an insider to one of its most outspoken critics. She shined a light on the inner workings of the organization and the role of its celebrity members, especially Tom Cruise. Leah's journey with Scientology started in her childhood. She was deeply embedded within its community for years, following its teachings and practices. Her dedication to the church was clear, which made her eventual departure and subsequent revelations all the more shocking to the public. Her relationship with Scientology was complex, revealing a tale of disillusionment, discovery, and a determination to speak out. Leah Remini told ABC's Dan Harris about her 30-year relationship with Scientology, a religion Remini's mother first introduced her and her sister to when they were just children. Central to Leah's revelations was her perspective on Tom Cruise, arguably the most famous face of Scientology. Over time, Tom had not only become the church's poster boy, but was also deeply involved in its operations wielding significant influence. Leah's interactions with Tom and her observations of his role within the church provided a unique vantage point. According to Leah, Tom had carefully curated his image over the years, projecting the persona of a benevolent figure. However, behind this carefully constructed facade, she hinted at manipulations and machinations. Leah's bold statements about Tom extended to the very core of Scientology's principles. She alleged that Tom used the church and its members for personal gain, painting a picture of of a celebrity leveraging his status within a religious organization for personal objectives. But my experience, and there seemed to be uh, a lot of power there. One of her most startling claims centered around Tom's relationship with Nicole Kidman, his ex-wife. Leah didn't shy away from suggesting that Tom used the church's resources to orchestrate their breakup due to Nicole's reservations about Scientology. As Leah went public with her experiences, the world was offered a rare insider's glimpse into the world of Scientology. Her revelations, particularly about Tom, were met with a mix of shock, intrigue, and support. Many praised her courage in speaking out against a powerful institution, while others questioned the veracity of her claims. And speaking of Nicole Kidman, she was Tom's second wife, and their marriage lasted the longest, a full 11 years. When Nicole and Tom got married in 1990, it was a union that captured the world's imagination. Nicole with her ethereal beauty and Tom with his undeniable charisma seemed like the epitome of a Hollywood power couple. Their love story deepened even further when they decided to adopt. After facing the heartbreak of multiple miscarriages, the couple adopted two children, Isabella Jane in 1992 and Connor in 1995. On the surface, their family looked like one of unity and love. However, behind the scenes, the tenets of Scientology began to cast a shadow over their relationship. Tom, a devout member of the church, was keen on raising their children within the church's doctrines. This decision became a major point of contention between the couple, with Nicole reportedly not as invested in the church's teachings. As Tom delved deeper into the folds of Scientology, the rift between the two widened, leading to speculations and concerns. The culmination of these tensions became evident in 2001 when the couple announced their decision to part ways. The aftermath of their split was rife with speculations, with many pointing to Scientology as a significant factor in their breakup. Was Nicole the love of your life? What do you, what do you mean, Peter? You were married for 10 years? Uh, listen, we raised children. I want Nicole to be happy. That's what I want. 
Nicole's reluctance to immerse herself and their children in the church's practices was rumored to be a primary reason for their separation. Nicole's reluctance to immerse herself and their children. After the divorce, Nicole's relationship with her adopted children, Isabella and Connor, took a complicated turn. It was widely reported that the children's allegiance to Scientology and their father distanced them from Nicole. This division became painfully evident in instances like Connor's 2019 wedding, where Nicole was notably absent, yet Tom was present. Now, Tom Cruise's intense dedication to Scientology and his outspoken nature would further show when he clashed with Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields, with her undeniable talent and striking beauty, has always been a figure of admiration in Hollywood. Yet, in the mid-2000s, she found herself in the center of a storm, not for her acting prowess, but due to her candid revelations about postpartum depression and her subsequent clash with Tom Cruise on the topic of mental health treatment. So it all started when Brooke Shields opened up about her struggles with postpartum depression after having her daughter. In a world where talking about mental health can sometimes feel like a taboo, especially for new moms, Brooke's honesty was pretty brave. She talked about how tough it was and how she decided to take antidepressants to help her through it. She was basically saying, hey, it's okay to need a little help, which was a pretty important message. Enter Tom Cruise with his strong opinions in Scientology. And Scientology has some pretty strong opinions about psychiatry and medication, none of them good. During a now famous interview in 2005, Cruise didn't hold back. He criticized Brooke Shields for taking antidepressants and even suggested that vitamins and exercise were the way to go instead. He went as far as to call psychiatry a pseudoscience and labeled Brooke's decision to use medication as irresponsible. Before I was a Scientologist, I never agreed with psychiatry. And then when I started studying the history of psychiatry, I started realizing more and more why I didn't agree with psychiatry. The thing that I'm saying about Brooke is that there's misinformation, okay? And she doesn't understand the history of psychiatry. The media and public were on fire after that. I mean, here was one of Hollywood's biggest stars basically dismissing the real painful experiences of a new mom dealing with postpartum depression. People were outraged. It wasn't just about Brooke and Tom anymore. It turned into a bigger conversation about mental health, the legitimacy of psychiatric treatments, and the right to choose your own path to healing without being judged for it. Realizing the mess he'd created, Cruz eventually tried to make things right. He personally visited Brooke Shields' home to apologize. And from what Brooke said in later interviews, it was a genuine and heartfelt apology. She seemed to appreciate that he made the effort to mend fences, but Tom Cruise's run-ins with other actors didn't stop there. Enter Alec Baldwin, a guy who's never shy about speaking his mind, especially on topics he cares about. One thing Baldwin has always been vocal about is the pay disparities in Hollywood. During the annual Women in Hollywood dinner, Baldwin addressed the issue of pay inequality faced by female actors, and he couldn't resist taking a playful jab at Tom Cruise. With his usual wit, Baldwin joked that if Tom Cruise could just lower his asking price by $29 million, it might help balance the scales a bit. And today, women in Hollywood still earn, on average, two-thirds of what men do. And that is unacceptable. The good news is there's an easy way to correct this injustice. I believe we could balance the scales if Tom Cruise would simply lower his quote by a mere $29 million. Sure, it was a joke, but there was a pointed critique behind it. Baldwin was highlighting the massive paychecks that top male actors like Cruise get and contrasting that with the struggles female actors face to get equal pay. This wasn't just a random... It was a spotlight on a real problem in Hollywood, the gender pay gap. By bringing Cruz into the conversation, Baldwin was underscoring the vast earnings of top-tier male actors and how starkly different it is for many female actors. Cruz's salary kind of sets the bar for what male actors can earn in blockbuster films, but it also throws the pay disparities into sharp relief. Baldwin's comments, while lighthearted, hinted at a competitive undercurrent between the two actors. They both have significant roles in Hollywood, but their views on the industry and its inner work seem to diverge quite a bit. But Tom Cruise's clashes with other celebrities didn't end with Brooke Shields or Alec Baldwin. One of the more bizarre incidents involved none other than Justin Bieber. It all started with a seemingly out-of-nowhere tweet from Bieber, where he openly challenged Cruise to a fight in the UFC octagon. Tom, if you don't take this fight, you're scared and you will never live it down, Bieber tweeted to his millions of followers. The world watched in a mix of amusement and confusion. 
Why on earth would a young pop star, known for his catchy hits and not for throwing punches, challenge an actor almost three decades older to a physical showdown? The tweet was completely unexpected and sent the internet into a frenzy of speculations, memes, and endless debates. People were trying to figure out the origin of this challenge. Was there some hidden beef between Bieber and Cruz that none of us knew about? Or was this just a spontaneous act of bravado from Bieber, maybe after watching too many action movies? As the tweet went viral, the internet lit up with discussions. Some thought it was a publicity stunt, others speculated about a secret feud. The randomness of the challenge, especially given their age difference and completely different career paths, made it all the more fascinating. Cruz, always the cool customer, stayed silent, letting the online storm rage on without getting involved. Eventually, Bieber acknowledged the absurdity of his challenge, turning the whole thing into a lighthearted joke. But fans couldn't help but wonder if something might have happened behind the scenes to spark such a random call-out. And then there's the ongoing saga between Tom Cruise and John Travolta. Both are considered Scientology's golden boys, but within the mysterious world of Scientology, their relationship has been a subject of whispers, speculations, and rumored tensions for years. For a long time, John Travolta was the shining star of Scientology. His deep involvement with the church was well documented, and he was often seen as its most prominent celebrity representative. Travolta's commitment to Scientology and its teachings was well known, making him a central figure in the church's celebrity lineup. But then Tom Cruise came along, and things started to shift. Cruise's rise within Scientology was meteoric. His devotion to the church's teachings, combined with his superstar status in Hollywood, quickly made him a significant figure within the church. As Cruise's involvement deepened, he began to eclipse Travolta's long-standing position. The hierarchy within Scientology isn't always clear to outsiders, but when ex-members started talking, they hinted at a changing internal landscape. They suggested that Cruz had risen to a higher echelon than Travolta. The real intricacies of their relationship remain hidden behind the church's characteristic secrecy. But external observations and insider claims paint a picture of a deep-seated rivalry. This tension isn't really about personal differences. It's more about the shifting sands of religious recognition. Cruz's rapid ascent and the attention he received reportedly created a bit of friction with Travolta, who had been a dedicated member for much longer. Both Travolta and Cruz have been pillars of the church in their own ways. Their contributions, both financially and in terms of global representation, have been invaluable to Scientology. Yet, their rumored rivalry highlights the complexities of religious institutions and the very human desires for recognition and validation. And who can forget the feud between Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt? These two Hollywood heavyweights starred together in the 1994 gothic horror film, Interview with the Vampire, based on Anne Rice's novel. While audiences were excited to see these two powerhouses on screen together, behind the scenes the atmosphere was filled with a competitive intensity that left a lasting mark on their relationship. Brad Pitt, with his brooding charm, was the rising star at the time. He had already wowed audiences with his roles in movies like Thelma and Louise. On the other hand, Tom Cruise was already a Hollywood titan, known for his blockbuster hits like Top Gun and A Few Good Men. Their collaboration in Interview with the Vampire was set against this backdrop of ascending stardom for Pitt and established dominance for Cruise. One particularly telling incident highlighted the underlying rivalry between them. During filming, Pitt admitted to feeling a sense of resentment toward Cruz. He felt overshadowed by Cruz's commanding screen presence and off-camera charisma. Cruz, with his larger-than-life persona, often took center stage, leaving Pitt feeling sidelined. The shoot itself was challenging, with Pitt later describing the filming experience as miserable. Despite their reported differences, it's undeniable that both actors delivered stellar performances in the film. Their on-screen dynamic was widely praised, and many considered it one of the movie's highlights. The palpable tension between their characters, likely fueled by their off-screen rivalry, added depth to the narrative, making their interactions all the more captivating. In the years that followed, both Pitt and Cruz solidified their positions as Hollywood icons. While their paths occasionally crossed, they largely carved out independent legacies in the cinematic landscape. Then there's the saga between Cruz and Mark Wahlberg. Cruz made a controversial statement once, comparing the rigors of his acting work to the challenges faced by soldiers fighting in Afghanistan. This comment, whether made in passing or without fully considering its implications, drew the ire of many, including fellow actor Mark Wahlberg. Cruz, known for performing his own stunts and immersing himself deeply in his roles, drew parallels between the physical demands of his job and the life and death stakes faced by military personnel in combat zones. While it's true that actors, especially those in action roles, face significant physical 
challenges, comparing them to the sacrifices made by soldiers was seen by many as tone deaf and dismissive. Wahlberg didn't hold back. He called Cruz out saying, how effing dare you? Well, my job is as difficult as somebody in the military. How f dare you? You know, while you sit in the makeup chair two hours. I don't give a f getting your ass busted. And a lot of people agreed with Wahlberg, feeling that Cruz's comment was out of line. And true to form, Cruz remained silent, letting the controversy swirl without offering any clarification or apology. Besides all of these feuds, Tom Cruise is also known for his numerous legal battles. In 1998, Cruz took on the British tabloid Daily Express and won. The paper had alleged that his marriage to Nicole Kidman was a sham to hide his supposed homo. Cruz wasn't having any of it and successfully sued them, clearing his name. Then in May 2001, Cruz found himself in another legal tangle, this time with gay b actor Chad Slater. Slater had claimed in a celebrity magazine that he and Cruz had an affair. Cruz once again denied the allegations and filed a lawsuit. Slater couldn't afford to defend himself, so he defaulted, leading to a judge ordering him to pay $10 million in damages to Cruz. The whole affair ended with Slater admitting that his claims were false, putting that rumor to rest. But Cruz's legal battles didn't stop there. He also sued Bold magazine publisher Michael Davis for a whopping $100 million. Davis had alleged that he had a video proving Cruz was gay. The suit was eventually dropped after Davis publicly stated that the video was not of Cruz and that Cruz was indeed hetero. Cruz wasn't about to let anyone tarnish his reputation without a fight. In 2006, Cruz went after cyber squatter Jeff Berger to gain control of the TomCruise.com domain name. At the time, the domain redirected visitors to information about Cruz on Celebrity1000.com. The World Intellectual Property Organization, YPO, eventually ruled in Cruz's favor handing over the domain to him on July 5, 2006. Cruz proved once again that he wasn't afraid to take legal action to protect his image and interests. Cruz's legal woes continued into 2009 when magazine editor Michael Davis Sapir filed a lawsuit claiming that his phone had been wiretapped at Cruz's behest. However, the case was dismissed by a Los Angeles judge because the statute of limitations had expired. Cruz emerged unscathed from this particular legal skirmish. One of the more high-profile cases came in October 20. 2012, when Cruz sued in Touch and Life and Style magazines for defamation. The magazines had claimed that Cruz had abandoned his six-year-old daughter, Suri. During the deposition, Cruz admitted that he hadn't seen his daughter for 110 days, but the lawsuit was eventually settled the following year. Tom Cruise has definitely had his share of drama in Hollywood, but despite being a controversial figure, no one can dispute his immense success and impressive filmography. In 2006, Tom Cruise was riding high in Hollywood. Premier magazine ranked him as the most powerful actor in Tinseltown, placing him at number 13 on their power list, making him the top-ranked actor that year. Forbes magazine also chimed in, naming him the world's most powerful celebrity. Cruz's star power was such that the founder of CinemaScore in 2016 singled him out, along with Leonardo DiCaprio, as the kind of star who could boost a movie's box office numbers, regardless of its quality. Cruz's influence wasn't just limited to the silver screen. On October 10, 2006, Japan declared it Tom Cruise Day, honoring him for his love for and close association with Japan. This special day was a testament to his global appeal and impact beyond Hollywood. Cruise's interests also extended to aviation, where he's an accomplished aerobatic pilot. In 2010, he was inducted into the Living Legends of Aviation and received the Aviation Inspiration and Patriotism Award from the Kitty Hawk Air Academy. As an aviation enthusiast, Cruise owns several aircraft, including a P-51 Mustang, showcasing his passion for flying. Cruz kicked off his acting career in the early 1980s, quickly making a name for himself with standout roles in Risky Business, 1983, and Top Gun, 1986. These films catapulted him into the spotlight and laid the foundation for his legendary career. He didn't just stop at being a teen heartthrob and action hero, though. Cruz earned critical acclaim with his roles in dramas like The Color of Money, 1986, Rain Man, 1988, and Born on the Fourth of July, 1989. His portrayal of Ron Kovic in the latter won him a Golden Globe and an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor, proving he had serious acting chops. In the 1990s, Cruz solidified his status as a leading Hollywood star with a string of commercially successful films. He starred in the intense courtroom drama A Few Good Men, 1992, the gripping thriller The Firm, 1993, the gothic horror interview with the vampire, 1994, and the romantic comedy 
Jerry Maguire, 1996. Jerry Maguire earned him another Golden Globe and a second Academy Award nomination. His role as a charismatic motivational speaker in Magnolia, 1999, brought him yet another Golden Globe and an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor. Moving into the 2000s, Cruz became synonymous with high-octane action and science fiction films, often performing his own jaw-dropping stunts. Since 1996, he's been the face of the Mission, Impossible series, playing the indomitable Ethan Hunt. His other notable films in this genre include Vanilla Sky, 2001, Minority Report, 2002, The Last Samurai, 2003, Collateral, 2004, War of the Worlds, 2005, Night and Day, 2010, Jack Reacher, 2012, Oblivion, 2013, Edge of Tomorrow, 2014, Jack Reacher, Never Go Back, 2016, The Mummy, 2017, and Top Gun, Maverick, 2022. Top Gun, Maverick became his highest grossing film and earned him a Best Picture nomination at the Academy Awards as a producer, proving that even after decades in the industry, Cruise can still dominate the box office. Alongside his film achievements, Cruise was named People's Man Alive in 1990 and topped their Most Beautiful People list in 1997.